Hey guys, welcome back to Honeyco. My name is Keo and we are tasting coffees. We've actually been tasting a lot of coffees, uh, taping these back to back to back to back. So if I'm full of energy today, that's why. And if I run out of energy, that's also why, because caffeine crash is a thing. Subscribe, tell a friend, those things help a lot and they're free to do. Don't be ashamed of us. Tell your friends. Let's talk about the coffee. This is the one I've actually been really excited to taste. It's called Soda Pop. It's a blend from Plain Sight Coffee Roasters. It uses uh, coffees from Kenya, Papua New Guinea, and Brazil with tasting notes of cherry cola, lime, and chocolate sauce. That's what they said. They're saying it's a perfectly medium roast. And you can see that like there are many different sizes of bean. It's a blend. Now we're going to taste it both as an espresso and as a pour over. It is a medium roast, so you, you could probably do both with both of them. I have not tasted this at all before, so this is going to be the first time we're tasting it. All right, soda pop. Let's grind it. We're putting it in our go grinder. It's already been measured 12 grams in. We actually already also dosed our coffee for the espresso into our Baratza Seti. The setting is uh, 2B on the Bratzetti. Let's grind the coffee and prepare our filter. Mm. Okay, so there is a little bit of like a fishy smell. That's not promising. That's not promising. Let's try the coffee, see what happens. I have no idea what to expect, honestly. Uh, when you're blending coffees, you're you're deliberately trying to make something complex or interesting. So it'll be interesting to see if it's complex. Let's brew the coffee. 12 grams in. We're going to put 24 ml into the pre-infusion, like bloom stage of the coffee. And I can see that the coffee is blooming. So when I get up, I'm going to go up to 30. And I'm going to let this breathe a little bit. And, and after 30 seconds, or when the clock gets to 30 seconds, then we'll start pouring at a very controlled rate to get to 100 ml at around one minute. So we're gonna try and pour at a rate of about three ml a second, and that should get us there. But one of the things I'm really looking for in a pour over like this is that the bed level or the slurry level, the amount of water and coffee inside there stays about equal. And we got 97 seconds at a minute. I'm gonna let that drain down a little bit when you get to a minute 15, I'm gonna pour again. Now it is important to have more or less the same pouring system uh, or the same recipe when you're trying coffees for the first time, especially since we're not really doing cupping so much anymore. And the truth is, this is how people are drinking the coffee anyway. So it's probably a better way to assess whether or not consumers will like the coffee this way versus the cupping method, which is done by professionals, Q graders, but you know, it's designed for giving feedback to the farm or to buyers. And those grades are not, not totally as helpful to us, the consumers, as tasting a pour over is. That's why you'll see in some great cafes around the world, when you are buying a bag of beans, they will make the pour over for you and let you taste it first. All right, so we are now at 167 ml, and I'm just gonna do a center pour all the way to 180 because we are at two minutes and five seconds and I want to stop right around there. And while we're doing that, let's pull our espresso. Looks like a good shot. 18 grams in. So we're looking for about 36 to 40 ml out in about 30 to 40 seconds is usually what we're looking for here in Honeycomb. So we're at 39 ml at 40 seconds. Looks good. Okay, so here's our coffee, Dave. You wanna come taste this coffee? Okay. I require a stir on all my espressos just so that it's the same every time. That's Dave. Hello guys. So Dave, this is the soda pop blend from Plain Sight. It has Kenya, Papua New Guinea, and Brazil coffees in it. You wanna taste the espresso first or the pour over? Uh, over? Okay, let's start with the pour over. So I am smelling like house tea at the Chinese restaurant. Does it taste like Coke? That's the question. I think that's what everyone wants to know. Does this taste like Coke? Mm, it has a very interesting sweetness. 
has an interesting sweetness, like high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Very um, everyday coffee flavor. Like it's not very exciting. It's very um, something that you can drink every day. I guess Coke is something that people want to drink every day. A lot of flavors. The aroma is like clove. From the, yes, the aroma is like clove. So I, that earlier I was saying that it's like a like a Chinese restaurant tea, mm -hmm. right? But what I'm talking about is like kind of the spices and floral. Yeah. yeah. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. That's really unusual for coffee. All right, so let's uh, give a shot for the espresso. Better, yeah. yeah. I think this this is supposed to be an espresso. Caramelized uh, sugar. Yeah, I think in the end, in the finish, like after you swallow it, it's like Coke in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. I think um, one of the things that we're, that you'll face is that there's no fizziness to it, oh. so it's hard to compare because Coke is as much a flavor as it is a feeling, oh. right? A texture in your mouth, uh, and you don't have any of that, but you do have a lot of the. Sweetness. I don't know about cherry Coke, but definitely Coke. Lime is there. You got lime? Yes. You don't put lime in Coca-Cola. It's too weird. Yeah. So you're talking about the flavor differences when you're putting together. Uh, you, need uh, to find the right you need to find the right balance. Yeah. Whereas you don't really drop lime into, into Coke. You usually drop a lemon. Yeah. And so there's a big difference between the malic flavors yeah. that that are introduced, like a, a, a lime has something like 30% more malic acid yeah. than a lemon. You drop lime into what? Beer. <laughs> into a brighter flavor. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good uh, little bit of input is that when you're, when you're thinking of a blend, especially for something like a pour over where the flavors are more expanded, what you want is to have something that's exciting but understandable, right? That that is complementary, yeah. right? So maybe that's something that's kind of a little bit confusing here, which you do taste on the filter, but you're not tasting so much on the espresso just because of the proximity of the flavors to each other. So when it's a lot more compressed, the flavors start to um, complement each other a bit better. It is good as espresso. I think it's better for espresso. I'm sure you could do a few things to it in the pour over to make it more interesting. But generally speaking, I think we'll stick by that. That's our buying advice. Use this as an espresso, not as a uh, not as a pour over. Best way to maximize the coffee, basically. If you want to taste coffees like this and they're on bar and they happen to be here, you can taste them for no additional cost. If, if you're in a honeycomb, um, we're a co-working space and people come here and work here for an average of, of about 75 pesos an hour. Dave and I are here. One of us is here every day, right? One of us is here every day and that means that your coffee is always going to be great. We've been training you baristas uh, to help out in that. So if you ever want to taste stuff like this, come visit us here in honeycomb and follow along on Instagram. I'm at KO Caution Instagram. You can follow at Daily Drink Mag and at Honeycomb Manila. Wish you guys good luck. Wish you guys good health. Wish you guys great coffee. Peace.